Okay, so this is a first in a series of videos where we are going to explore something called integer partitions leading up towards the Rogers Ramanujan identity for which we will provide a proof. Okay, so let's look at this definition first. So we say that lambda, this k tuple lambda 1 to lambda k, is a partition of n if these two things are satisfied. So if lambda 1 plus lambda 2 up to lambda k equals n, so they sum to n, and then if lambda 1 is bigger than or equal to lambda 2, all the way up to lambda k, which is bigger than or equal to 1. So these are in non-increasing order. Okay, and so we often write, instead of this tuple, lambda 1 to lambda k, we'll often write just the addition problem over here, unsimplified. We'll see that in the examples. And another thing we want is something called the partition function. So p of n is defined to be the number of partitions of n. So let's look at some examples real quick. So let's start off uh, pretty small. So n equals 1. Well, obviously, there's just one partition, and that's 1. So now, if we go to n equals 2, in that case, there will be two partitions. We could write 2 and then 1 plus 1. And so that's what I mean, writing it as the unsimplified addition problem instead of a tuple. So now let's look 3. So we have um, 3, 2 plus 1, and then 1 plus 1 plus 1. So those are the partitions of 3. Um, 4. So we have 4, 3 plus 1, uh, 2 plus 2, 2 plus 1 plus 1, and then finally 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. Okay, good. Let's do one more. So let's do maybe 5. And notice in this case we have 5, we have 4 plus 1, we have 3 plus 2, 3 plus 1 plus 1, 2 plus 2 plus 1, and then next we have 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, and then finally all 1s. Good. And so notice, uh, from this exploration that we've done, we know P of N for the first couple of values. So notice that P of 1 is equal to 1, P of 2 equals 2, P of 3 equals 3, P of 4 equals uh, 5, and then notice P of 5 equals 7. Okay, so now maybe what you're thinking about is that this seems pretty simple. What are the interesting questions we could ask um, regarding these partitions? And so I'm going to clean up the board and then I'll talk about some interesting questions that we could ask involving partitions, um, including ones that we'll prove in, in future videos and the Rogers or Monotron identities. Okay, good. So let's get to it. Okay, so we just looked at the definition of a partition and a bunch of examples. So now that brings us to this. What are the interesting questions that we can ask about partitions or what are some interesting results that exist about partitions? And so a big one would be the following. It would be, let's say, P1 of N equals number of partitions satisfying rule number one, and then P2 of N equals number of partitions satisfying rule number two. Good. And then an interesting thing to do would be show to show that P1 of N equals P2 of N for all N. And so, for example, we could say rule one equals partitions with only odd parts. And that means that the lambdas can only be odd numbers. And then maybe uh, rule number two could be uh, with distinct parts. And so what I mean there is that we take off 
the greater than or equal to sign and just make it greater than. So we can only have distinct lambdas. And it turns out that in this case, the number of partitions with only odd parts and the number of partitions with only distinct parts, these numbers are the same. And on the next board, we'll look at some numerical evidence that supports that claim, and in a later video, we'll prove that. Okay, so I'm going to erase the board, and then let's do some experimentation. Okay, so on a previous board, I alluded to the fact that the number of partitions of n into odd parts is the same as the number of partitions into distinct parts. And right here, I want to provide some numerical evidence of that. So here we'll make a chart with uh, the natural number n, all of the partitions into odd parts, and then all of the partitions into distinct parts, and we'll see that they're the same. And we'll jump around a little bit because numbers like 1 and 2 are not super interesting. So maybe let's start with 3. And so we can partition 3 into odd parts two different ways. We can do it with 3, and we can do it with 1 plus 1 plus 1. So notice the only other partition of 3 is 2 plus 1, but that obviously uses an even number. Now with distinct parts, we can use 3, and we can use 2 plus 1. And again, the only other partition of 3 is 1 plus 1 plus 1, but that does not have distinct parts. So now let's maybe do 4. So here we can have with odd parts, 3 plus 1, and then with distinct parts, we can have 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. So again, there are two partitions with odd parts. So uh, now let's look at distinct parts. So we can have 4, we can have 3 plus 1, and that's it. Notice we can't have 2 plus 2, we can't have 2 plus 1 plus 1, because again, we don't have distinct parts in that case. Okay, maybe let's look at 5. So if we have 5, we could have odd parts would be 5, we could have 3 plus 1 plus 1, and then we could have all ones. Okay, so we've got three partitions of five with odd parts. Now let's look for distinct parts. So we could have five, we could have four plus one, or we could have three plus two. And those are the only partitions of five with distinct parts. So let's maybe jump down a little bit and look at seven. So if we look at 7 with odd parts, we could have 7, we could have 5 plus 1 plus 1 is 7, we could have 3 plus 3 plus 1, that's 7, we could have 3 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, so that's 7, and then finally we could have all 1s. So that's another way to partition 7 with odd parts. So notice we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 partitions with odd parts. So now let's look at distinct parts. So we could have 7, we could have 6 plus 1, we could have 5 plus 2, and we could have 4 plus 3. Good. And then notice we could also have 4 plus 2 plus 1. And those are all the partitions of 7 with distinct parts. Okay, good. So I'll clean up the board, and then we'll make a similar chart um, for the rogers ramanujan identity after stating it. Okay, good. So now let's look at this theorem by Rogers and Ramanujan. So it says, the number of partitions of n with parts that differ by at least 2, so that's like rule number 1, is equal to the number which only have parts of the form 5k plus 1 or 5k plus 4. So, this is an astounding theorem, and I'm really excited to make this series of videos where we'll eventually prove this theorem, and it's going to take a bit of time, but I think it'll be worth it. Okay, so now let's look at some numerical evidence here. So, we're not going to look at all numbers in a row starting at 1 because it's kind of boring at the beginning. So, let's just start maybe with 5, and we'll jump around a little bit. So, let's see. Difference 2, so that means... Each part, these lambdas, they cannot be equal, and they can't even be one different from each other. They have to be two different from each other. So let's see, we can have 5, or we can have 4 plus 1. And those are the only partitions that satisfy this difference 2 condition. Notice 3 plus 2 will not work because 3 and 2 only have a difference of 1. Now let's look at uh, parts of the form 5k plus 1 or 5k plus 4. So notice we could have um, 4 plus 1, 
So that would work. It's got one of the form 5K plus four and one of the form 5K plus one. And then the only other one will be one plus one plus one plus one plus one will be all ones. So notice we've got two partitions of this type and two partitions of that type. So now let's go, let's skip a couple and maybe go to eight. So for ones with difference two, we can use eight itself. We can use seven plus one. We can use six plus two, and we can use five plus three. Notice we can't move down any further because we would have four plus four, but that doesn't even have difference one. And we can't have a triple because the smallest triple we can have is five plus three plus one, but that adds up to nine. So we have one, two, three, four partitions of eight with this difference two condition. So now uh, let's look uh, at partitions with 5K plus one and 5K plus four parts. So notice we first have six plus one plus one. So notice six is of the form 5K plus one. And so we have, that's obviously eight. And then we have four plus four. So that's another one. And now uh, we can pull these fours apart into ones and that will give us our last two. So we have four plus one plus one plus one plus one. And then finally, all ones. So we've got four partitions on this side and we have four partitions on that side. So the number of partitions is the same. So now let's look at one more. So let's look at nine. So notice we have nine is a partition that has the difference two condition kind of trivially. We have eight plus one. Um, we have seven plus two. We have six plus three. And so, so now notice we can't go down to five plus four because that only has a difference of one and we want a difference of two, but we can do five plus three plus one. And nine is actually the smallest number that allows us to have this kind of triple. So let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five partitions with difference two, which means we're going to look for five partitions um, with parts 5k plus one and 5k plus four. Okay, so let's see. First, we can have just the number nine. So notice that's five plus four. And then we can have six plus one plus one plus one. So all of those parts are of the form 5K plus one. And next, we can have four plus four plus one. Good. And then we can have four plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one. And then finally, all ones, one plus one plus one. So we've got five partitions of that type as well. So this gives us some numerical evidence for the trueness of this Rogers Ramanujan identity, which we'll investigate in a further video. Okay, so this is the end.